All right, everybody. Thank you for joining our uh, next podcast here today. We're going to be doing a series of podcasts, uh, particularly on this topic, uh, that pivots from M365 itself. We have a very long pedigree of uh, what we've done in the space, how we started. We can get to all that. But there's a lot of value in M365, but there's also a number of challenges. And so today we just want to talk on a high level the uh, different components, the advantages it brings to the AEC, and discuss some of the challenges. And then next go around, we'll look at SharePoint, we'll look at Teams, Outlook, and how we got there. So that would be a nice series uh, that we want to share with you folks. So I'm Joe Gigerich. I'm the CEO and founder of Project Ready. Uh, with me today is Shaley Modi uh, Oza, our lead developer and the genius behind what we have built. And so uh, with that, Shaley, so you work with our customers all the time and Project Ready brings together M365 and ACC and Procore. We're really, you know, an integrated data environment at that point. But M365 mm -hmm. is something that we really started from as it goes back to SharePoint on-prem. And so talk about the M365 and some of those tools and where you think they're applicable for the AEC. Yeah, definitely. And as you said, we started with on-prem, but uh, moved on to Office 365, which now with M365 is even more integrated and it brings together all of these different services from Microsoft, making it so much better to bring all of that content together with SharePoint, be it the uh, M365 groups and your Outlook as well as Microsoft Teams. Oh, all and then of the, oh, Azure, yeah, the ability to build modern apps. I mean, mm -hmm. you mentioned, you know, we came from SharePoint on-prem. Back in the day, all these products were separate. I mean, Teams was really, what was it? I forget, communicator, I can't remember offhand. Uh, it became Skype. Anyway, these were all separate things. And so getting all these systems to talk together, locked on-prem, really kind of was not great, right? And so M365 has, it's really a connected platform. And this is something I often like to say is that M365, the sum is greater than the parts. Uh, and that's what Microsoft has really revolutionized. Uh, anyway, I want to turn it back to you. But Definitely. Kind of and right? one of the biggest benefits, I would say, going to M365, of, of course, is that everything is now in the cloud. In the last few years, how businesses has mo have moved, and we would think that having that uh, flexibility where all of this content, be it in Teams, Outlook, SharePoint, it can be accessed from anywhere and any device. And that makes it so much better as well. And um, while being on the cloud as well, because it's all M365, it is very secure. They have the standard two-factor, multi-factor authentication. Uh, so just the whole flexibility of making sure that everything is secure yet available on the cloud and easily available just makes it so much better for users to just easily get to what, what they need to in, in a secure manner as well. Yeah, and the pandemic obviously pushed the cloud over the edge, right? In terms of everybody had to go to the cloud very rapidly, we witnessed that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the product itself, like, let's take a quick beat on SharePoint, for instance. What are some of the aspects of SharePoint that just pretty much have value to everybody, but with regard to the AEC? So I would say at, at the highest level, SharePoint just, it has a, it's one of the best um, repositories where you can store your documents and content. Uh, so in terms of the document repository, it, it is a pretty good backend and the direct integration that it has with the Microsoft products, like with the Word, Excel, PowerPoint files, users can save all of these documents within SharePoint and um, you could have multiple document libraries set it up in a way that makes sense for your organization and as we work with customers we kind of try to understand what would make sense in terms of what would be the libraries and the list yeah, the, and the metadata columns the te taxonomy and making sure that that stays consistent basically across different sites as we start to set set that up um right. and that's and, really important and one of the, just to go to taxonomy and sharepoint as well 
some of the challenges, which are really apropos to mention now, is how do you roll out a consistent taxonomy? How do you run the best uh, taxonomy? How do you secure it? And for us, SharePoint is really specific to the project in large measure. And one of the things that I've witnessed along with you is you'll have people, you know, they have one site, uh, some libraries, and they just jam stuff in there, and it just does not scale. But the reason why they do that is because to roll out a dedicated site per project requires somebody to do it and manage the security. So how do you see SharePoint and its utility on the project? Yeah, definitely. And yeah, making sure that that taxonomy is set up correctly and uh, it's not just everything is saved in the one documents library under file folders. Um, I think that that's pretty important, but even with that, it just makes managing all of these different aspects of the projects. Like you could have your legal documents in one library. If you have other kind of content like images and videos, you could have a separate library for that. With the metadata, it just makes it easy to then search for all of this content. It makes that really powerful where you can search different uh, files or documents across all of these sites. And I would say that um, we could just additionally have uh, flows around it to just make sure that if there is any particular process that needs to be uh, handled at the SharePoint level, we can take care of that. The file sharing because of the security makes uh, it possible. Yeah, but if I can that, stop that yeah. for a second. Mm -hmm. So, but what we see over and over again, and some of it is security, is mm -hmm. so if, if it's better to have a repeatable taxonomy and organization of content, right, and a project having its own site, why then do most people not do that, right? What are, what are the challenges that's prohibiting them from taking that on? Uh, and then one of the things just to add as well, I, you all own SharePoint. If you're using Microsoft Exchange, which I think 98% of the planet does for business at this point, you already own it. I just think heretofore, a lot of people didn't think to use SharePoint. And then up against some of the challenges of SharePoint, that's why they don't adopt a repeatable, scalable taxonomy. Yeah, I definitely think that for someone who's new to SharePoint, initially it does seem like it is very difficult to set up, but once it is set up correctly, uh, it just it makes it so much easier to use. And I think because of that initial setup complications or difficulties, users end up going the easier route where when you create a Teams team, it just comes with the documents tab and they end up just using that one library. Putting and what's in the, the challenge with that? I mean, why? Folder structure, yeah. But, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I have my own objection to this. What What is like the challenge specifically on that uh, document library in Teams? And for what it's worth, folks, this is really their integrated approach. Teams is kind of like a wrapper, a UI wrapper, user interface. Behind Teams, that document library is a full SharePoint site. But the only thing in it is this one document library. And mm -hmm. Um, how do you control security on that, Shaley? Uh, you cannot essentially because there anybody who gets <laughs> added to the team basically has access to everything in there. So that's where it gets difficult because then it's just it's everything is open basically. That's the only way to add people. You add people to the team as owners or members and they would essentially have access to all the everything. documents in that library, correct? Right. And so at that point, it's really, you know, if, if that's all I had to work with, I would try to find other systems. I mean, even Dropbox, because there's no way you can segregate information in a secure way when you're just using that one library. Mm -hmm. Now, so how, how do you handle that challenge on the SharePoint side? Yeah, definitely. So as you mentioned before, Joe, that it's it has the whole SharePoint site behind it. It's just a matter of setting up that SharePoint site correctly because we can definitely add more libraries to it. And um, then at the library level, we can security trim the content depending on who needs access to what. And if we still need the Teams integration, Teams has the capacity to add additional libraries as tabs. So there are definitely all of these different ways where we can still, depending on 
how the users like the interface. We can either just bring them to SharePoint. We can still load things in Teams. So there are a lot of these different ways we can uh, bring these two together, as well as make sure that all the content is security trimmed properly as well. Yeah, so that is the challenge. So the, the answer to this is behind that team site, build it out and put in libraries that are germane and that you can control more granular permissions on. All right, folks, so sum it up really quickly. You all own it. That Teams document library means that you have a SharePoint site. It's just the one library is too wild. And so these challenges will go into greater depth uh, on our next series and then talk about how we explicitly help with those challenges so that you can have a better taxonomy and scale. So I went a lot into uh, SharePoint. I love SharePoint. I've been working in the space in the SharePoint world since 2005, but there are other components that we want to speak to on a high level. And again, we'll go into greater depth uh, on a subsequent podcast. So Teams, we mentioned Teams and Teams, like everything in M365 is just in, utterly connected to everything else. But what are some of the things in Teams that an AEC project would have benefit of? Uh, and then with that, some of the challenges. Yeah, definitely uh, starting with what are the benefits. So it's it's a great collaboration tool for sure, where we can bring together all the different team members who are working on the project and it gives this seamless experience where everybody can stay connected with, of course, the direct integration to SharePoint, access to all of the different um, project documents um, is easily available as well. So right from Teams, they give you the ability to connect it to uh, the different aspects of the SharePoint site, just not the documents library, but the other libraries right. as well. You so, can expose the SharePoint site. We embed our uh, solution as a, a tab inside that channel, um, and it's very extensible. I mean, just in general, the availability of APIs from Microsoft is really second to none. Um, and that's another real advantage that people want to take uh, part of. I mean, if, if it's a integrated world you need to live in, you need APIs to integrate. But anyway, mm -hmm. Teams has a number of these. I mean, the whole stack does. And it's because of that that we're able to roll them out, secure them, add our own uh, application as a interface inside Teams. And then Teams itself, I mean, there are certain things that really don't bear explanation. You can chat, you can have a video conference, and you can share documents easily. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's the extensibility and of Teams, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And along with the sharing, I would add to that, that because of the um, full integration of M365, not just sharing of documents, but even the collaboration and working on the files while you are on a meeting or within chat, it just makes that collaboration much more effective where you're working on the documents. And then there are a lot of additional integrations in M, uh, the M365 teams as well. They're adding more and more apps. Uh, so it just makes that whole integration uh, that much more powerful users who just need, need to stay in teams can just essentially stay there and that still be point. able to access yep, it, everything it was a they need. It's a UI wrapper, right? Mm -hmm. um, behind teams is a whole bunch of different uh, stack. Now, as to the challenges, though, one of the big challenges I see is that do you create a Teams channel? It's the right term, right, Shayla? Channel. I would just say Teams team because within a team there are teams, channels. Teams, teams, yeah, teams. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> <laughs> just a team, I guess. Yeah, creating yeah, so, a team. So yes, when you when you create SharePoint Teams, whatever, there's a whole Office 365 group behind it and all these other pieces. But you can really, over time, if you're not judicious and booting up a Teams, 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 if you're not judicious about booting up Teams, you'll end up with so many uh, different nodes within Teams, you won't be able to find anything. So that's also one of the other challenges is when and how easily can you turn it on? Mm -hmm. And how do you make sure you can find the appropriate Teams team quickly? If you're using this for projects and you have 100 projects, you're going to have 100 Teams channels if you're not careful. So that's one of the things that we address. Uh, and what we generally try to do is to take the best of and then corral it. You know, it's like a wild horse. You just got to get it 
to ride with you and connect to the horse and make it work for you. Is there anything else you want to add on teams at that point or? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with making sure that we create like the correct number of teams because that's that's one of the biggest um, problems we've seen as we work with customers where many times you have the same team members across projects and um, people aren't sure like do you create one team to work across projects or otherwise if there are too many teams people get confused where they're supposed to be communicating but we make that better by setting that up automatically and having the team in context of the project so that all the project related documents and any conversations stay in context of a project uh, it just uh, helps to make sure that that is set up in a consistent way uh, so that the users can find all of the information and communicate effectively, essentially. Yeah, and back to metadata, right? I mean, the way you keep things in context to a project is by having centralized metadata and a scalable taxonomy against it, which is our last podcast. It's the secret sauce of everything, and in particular in M365. So uh, one of the ways you address that challenge uh, is to bind everything to one ID, which is something that we do, and then roll these things out automatically, programmatically, so that you can have it consistent and templated. And then you have to develop some way for people to go directly to that Teams quickly in the context of the project. Email. So email, you know, I don't know why I always do this last, but everybody has the challenges. Email, people are going to continue to use it. People are going to continue to send attachments, and you're going to have to send attachments uh, via email. Uh, I can tell you that one of the pain points I have is that if you're sending content from SharePoint, you have to download zip files, navigate to different libraries if you want to go to taxonomy. That's something we do solve for in Connect and Attach. Uh, a bit of a shameful plug there, but um, talk about the advantages of Outlook and some of the challenges around that. Well, advantages of Outlook, I would say that everybody, as you mentioned, Joe, still relies a lot on emails, even though we have all of these collaborative tools. The simplest way to send out documents is you send an email and we have customers who have so many people sending in documents as attachments through emails and it just creates a lot of chaos because um, it's not an organized way to get the content. It's just an email with attachments and you need to make sure that they are uh, tracked properly, they're logged, the documents are brought in to the correct project with the correct metadata, just so it doesn't get, get lost in, in your email inbox. So I think while it is the easy tool and the one that is used most often, it's it's also the one that's that's most difficult to manage because it's not, not as organized as, as it should be. Yes, and that's just the ad hoc nature of email itself. And so what are the great advantages of um, you know, Microsoft's Exchange stack really is what Outlook is in this regard, is that it supports applications. Again, APIs and metadata um, is the cure for this. And that is one of the great things about, you know, as it relates to Outlook, if you will, APIs and metadata, right? APIs are everywhere and available. And so like in our case, we have... Uh, we have an app. It doesn't require client-side deployment. You log into a browser. There are all your workflows to manage that email. The good part is Outlook allows you to build things to do this. The bad part is that they're just not there off the shelf. And if you have the right metadata, then you can route email correctly. Again, that's scalable taxonomy. Anything to add, Shaley, or? Uh, no, I think that's all great. The only other thing I would add with Outlook is, again, with the integrated environment that we've talked we've been talking about with m365 oh, the group mailbox I forgot uh, all about it. exactly so the m365 group uh, that brings everything together has the group mailbox and um, that is one of the easiest way to keep all of these emails in context of the project so definitely we, that's something that once it is set up and users are getting these emails in their inbox but just by moving them to the group mailbox. It just makes it that much more integrated and uh, brings brings the associated content together in, in context of the project. Yeah, and it has its own email address. It's uh, I've mm -hmm. written about this. It's like a public folder, uh, except smarter. But if you do that, 
you also have the same challenge you have with teams where you can't find the group mailbox you need to find quickly. Because if it's if one person is naming a project, Bob's project, and somebody else is Bob's project, one, two, three, four, there's no consistency and there's no tie back of metadata to support that taxonomy. So that is a great feature. Uh, it's how you exploit it uh, is the challenge, but it, you know, people solve it like us. One other thing, so we talk about the challenges within M365. It's the ease of use or the ease of ability to administer security, to have consistency uh, around metadata, project nomenclature, uh, a whole series of things that we've referenced. And so with that, institutions, you know, what should an institution do when they're looking at this? I mean, they can try to build solutions themselves, look for products like our own, which uh, have already done a lot of this. But, you know, here, if you were just doing a custom job for a customer, how would we start this with planning? Yeah, so we definitely start with planning and trying to understand the day-to-day -day use case uh, for the organization of how the projects need to be organized, what are the different libraries, as we discussed earlier, that make the most sense, and um, the different, the way Project Ready brings it all together is we have roles which are mapped to libraries and the team members and how no, no. it all comes together. And, and we're going to, no? <laughs> no, no, just stop no. there for a second, because yeah. this is something I want to go into greater depth. Uh, on yeah, the yeah. Series. Yes. You, you, let, let me lead the witness. How, so we have this uh, client construction management that also required uh, some power platform uh, builds around it. It was a very integrative project, you know, it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, but how did we approach them? How did we get our client in sync with themselves, if you will, to approach the final outcome of a integrated data environment? Yeah, it's definitely figuring out the um, uh, process flow of what needs to happen and how all of these systems, while they are integrated in an organization, there are different team members using these different aspects of M365 separately and how things need to flow from, let's say, an email to SharePoint and what needs to be done within Teams and if there are any additional processes, like you mentioned with Power Automate, how they all need to come together and just mapping that out. And um, other systems other than M365, because that is the utter reality within the AEC is, you know, you got to get your M365 house in order. But when you're looking at what kind of taxonomy you're going to roll out, you mentioned, you know, people work in different work streams. People work in different platforms as well. Definitely. So we yeah. bring together ACC, we bring together Procore. And part of that journey did involve that commonality even across the other platforms. So you could drive M365 in sync with those other systems. So how did we go about gathering that information? Yeah, so we would start by... Um definitely understanding the use cases and which team members are using which different functionalities and what are the different data points across the projects that are essentially everybody is using different systems and managing the data separately but making that mapping of information of how it all comes together in context of the project is what we do when we work with the customer and uh, through a series of meetings and discussions, try to map that out and prepare that plan of how it will all come together. Yeah, and that plan, you know, the topic here today is ostensibly M365, but if you want to know what the desired end state of the taxonomy, the setup of SharePoint should be in the AEC, it's not just that, right? It's to get SharePoint to work, you need to have some alignment to ACC or Procore or Fieldwire or one of these other systems in flight. Definitely. All of these systems, while they are separate, but in the context of the project, they are all, there are documents in all of these different places. So sometimes we need to sync over the documents from one system to another. Sometimes it's just bringing all of those data points um, together in a report to see at a project level what's going on. But it's definitely bringing all of these di different systems, as well as M365, together and and making making them work essentially for the project. Yeah, if you have the 
equivalent metadata if it's consistent between the two uh, you know, various systems and can scale. Um, that's a big part of the M365 setup is for one, who's living in one system? And for two, how should SharePoint reflect the project and the way you understand the project in a way that's consistent with other platforms? So in our next podcast, we will be focusing much more on SharePoint actually exclusively to the extent that you can, given that uh, M365 is connected. And looking at specific things like common things that come up, how many libraries do you need? We'll talk about how you determine that, what the sweet spot is. Sometimes people use metadata as a library, sometimes libraries and metadata. And we'll talk about the taxonomy of library setup. And with that, the ongoing challenge of from the get-go and to the end of the project, the security around that. Um, and another thing we'll talk about is how you even want to name your sites, what you want to do with that information. Again, more taxonomy brought back into the context of SharePoint. And we'll talk about a whole bunch of other things, but those are some ones that just come up very commonly uh, that we do want to touch on. So with that, I'm Joe Gigrich, uh, Shaley Modi Oza. Uh, see you next time and um, look forward to continuing to have our podcast series with you. Thank you. Thank you.